All right, I'm the flat rate master, and today I'm answering something I get from time to time. Why no repair videos? Well, I never intended this channel to be for the do-it-yourselfer. This channel was specifically meant to help professional technicians and men and women looking to get into auto repair as a career. That's the whole purpose of it. It's not to show a guy how to change his starter, how to, you know, diagnose a bad cooling fan. It is not what the channel is about. Uh, I got an email from someone, and I don't have his name with me, but he suggested that he pointed out, you know, Eric the car guy has this many subscribers. Eric O at SMA has this many subscribers. You know, all these channels, you know, that have tons of subscribers. I don't care. Not what I intended my channel. My channel was specifically set up to be a niche channel for professional technicians and people coming into this industry. He talked about, you know, if I want my channel to blow up, I need to do repair videos. Again, I don't care. It's not why I'm doing this channel. I have no intention of retiring and going full time as a YouTuber like the humble mechanic. Now, I'm happy for him, I wish him the best, but again, that's not what I'm looking to do. One, I leave the industry as a technician. My value as helping these young technicians coming into the industry diminishes. So in order to help those, those young people coming in, I have to keep my feet in this industry. So there we go on that. Let's just go with simple logistics. I can't film during the day. I do not have time. This is a high, high volume shop. I am the shop foreman, so not only do I have to fix cars, I also have to help four other technicians in the shop figure out what they need to figure out, help them with parts, help them with problems. I've got to manage workflow through the shop. I got to make sure customers' cars get fixed in a timely fashion. And if you guys have watched any of my time-lapse videos, you'll see I get pulled off of jobs a lot. I guesstimate for every hour of time in the shop, 30 to 45 minutes is what I get to actually work on my tickets, my cars. So think about that in the editing process. I'm, I'm showing you what to do and then, oh, I gotta go do this. Then I get back, then I get restart filming again. And this shop is just way too high volume. Even if it came down to I had the time to film, I wouldn't have audio that would be usable because I've got a technician on one side who's going to be working. I got a technician on the other side who's going to be working. Not to mention the two other guys further down in the shop. Today, I was sitting there trying to talk and James was using the impact over and over and over again as I'm trying to talk to another technician. So even if I wanted to, I can't. Now he also suggested I stay late. Okay, well, it is nine something at night and I'm at the shop. Makes for a very long day. And I have a wife and kids that I wanna spend time with. So I can't 
stay late every night to film. As it is right now, I leave my house at 5.45 to 6 o'clock in the morning because of the whole bridge thing. So my days are already extremely long without staying late to film a repair that I should have gotten done for the customer during the day. Remember, this is a working shop. This is not Eric the Car Guy's studio where he's got all day to film a car repair. I don't have that kind of time. I've got customers that want their cars back. I've got a pile more cars that need to be looked at. So I just can't. There's just no way I can do that. Also, I batch film my videos. It's Thursday and I'm going to be filming four videos, all that'll go live next week. And that's how I do it. Now, there's some days where, some weeks where I may come in and do it two nights a week, but generally I film one night, night a week so I can go home and spend time with my family while my kids are still young. Now, I do plan on doing some diagnostic case studies as they present themselves. What that means is they're here when I film which has been the, the biggest drawback to me filming them is I'm not able to because they're either already repaired, customers declined, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't have a whole lot to show. Like this week, this week would have been, I had, would have had two great videos. Unfortunately, one was yesterday and the customer declined all repairs, but it would have been a very good case study to show you guys on air conditioning diagnostics, ambient air temp sensor diagnostics, and even visual inspections. The fault of the no AC complaint was the AC module was bad. It was not sending the signal to turn the AC compressor on out of its module to through the BCM to the ECM to actually turn it on. I could turn it on with a scan tool, but not with the switch on the dash. So vent solenoid, two broken wires. But it would have been a good case study to show why you need to do visual inspections. Ambient air temp sensor. I had a actually unplugged ambient air temp sensor. Well, I plugged it up, it still had the same fault code. I actually followed the trouble tree that Ford provides. It's real simple. Jump the wires, clear codes, run, run a uh, key on engine off test and see if it sets the opposite code. Well, it did. I went a little step further and actually put in a 15,000 ohm resistor, lucky guess by the way, and it now read 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So it would have been a fun video to shoot. Unfortunately, I don't have the tr access to the truck because they declined repairs and left. The other one is sitting right behind the camera. It is a Volkswagen GTI and it was in for a no AC complaint. Went through all the processes. I actually had a code for a the pressure switch. Well, it wasn't the pressure switch. It was the actual compressor. It would have been a good case study, but unfortunately, this is a working shop. It's already repaired, so I can't film it. So. I hope you guys understand that's why I don't do repair videos, but hopefully I'll get a chance to do some good diagnostic case studies for you, um, but that's why I don't do repair videos. Thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you like, really liked the video, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to make sure you get updates when I put out a new video. If you didn't like the video, 
you want repair videos, well, Eric O, SMA, go watch his channel. Go watch Thomas EXO VCDS, Scanner Danner, his brother James. There's plenty of channels out there that'll do those videos. And as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.